low. So given an array of prices where prices I is the price of the given stock at the ith element or at the on the ith day, you want to maximize your profit by choosing, excuse me, a single day to buy one stock and choosing a different day in the future to sell that stock. Return the maximum profit you can achieve from this transaction. If you cannot achieve any profit, then return a zero. So in other words, we are given a list of numbers like this, and each number represents the cost of a stock each day, the value of the stock each day. And so ideally we want to buy low and sell high. That, so in this middle example, of course, that first seven right there would be, um, I'll highlight that. So that first seven would be definitely having the ability to see the whole way out that the prices play out there. We can see that seven would not be ideal to buy, obviously. And this one being the lowest value would be buying very low. So that would be ideal. And then even though it looks like it's a good profit on the next day, if we hold out, through all of the days of this calendar or whatever you want to think of it as obviously this six would give us the value the difference between the six and the one would be five dollars or whatever form of currency of profit right okay so that being said let's figure out how can we determine this so obviously we need to go through the list at least one full time so we're looking at linear complexity, O of N, big O of N complexity, um, best case for us because no matter what, we, we've got to check every value, right? Because this four could be a 10 or something right there. And if we didn't check that and we bought on this day and we stopped at the six, then obviously we wouldn't have maximized our profit. So therefore we must go through the entire list at least once. Okay, so O of N is possibly what we're going for here. Um, maybe it would be worse. There could be other solutions definitely that are way worse than that, but we want to see if we can get it leaning towards that. And then we're no, we know we're pretty much optimal at that point. And the other thing to optimize on, of course, is space. And if we cannot create any other variable size data structures other than a handful of like constant, or excuse me, not necessarily constant, but other than a handful of like variables, local variables inside the function, a fixed amount of variables inside the function, then we can also keep it at constant space. So if we can avoid creating another list, for example, then we can keep the space constant. So therefore, if our solution, if we can knock out a solution that is linear time and constant space, then we have the optimal solution because it, it just can't possibly get better than that. At least not in my opinion. I, I'm not seeing it. Maybe there's some crazy sorting trick that somebody knows or something. But anyway, so that's what I'm going for because that's as far as my little brain can expand. So right here on leak code, that's where I specifically, this problem probably appear, appears in other places as well, but I took it from leak code. Um, just on a quick side note on that, I don't think leak code's like the best thing. It, it's a good source of a lot of data structure and algorithm challenges, of course, but some of their wording and some of their uh, test fodder and whatnot is definitely something to consider, uh, as well as when you run the program. If you submit your solution several times, you'll notice that the speed of your solution changes based on the load of the server and caching and all sorts of stuff like that. So. Just keep all that in mind if you do use leak code, of course. But anyway, and then on this specific one, they say it's the stock on the ith day. But if you look at their uh, their description, which I don't have here, they actually mean the ith plus one day because they're going off of a one based index. But that's not really important for actually solving the problem because the result and everything that we have isn't doesn't rely on the zero or one based indexing. So that being said, of course, these are their two examples, are these two lists, and they're expected to have these two outcomes. And then I've created this third list here. 
And so what's going on right here, this is JavaScript, and so it's just a really basic form of unit testing. So this console assert will just assert that this expression is true, and this part of this expression is that it will, of course, call our max profit function right here and make sure that it returns this value. And if not, it will say, like if I run it right now with an empty function, it says assertion failed for all three of them. So that's test-driven development right there in a nutshell because you want to write a failing test first and then write the uh, least amount of code that can make that test pass. So that's what we are fixing to do here. And of course, I've created this third example because as I was thinking this out earlier, I thought, wait a minute. So if we're going through this list and I track... I wanted to make sure that if they're, you know, right here would become just by adding a one to this list, you can see my highlighting has shown us that list is duplicated. And all I did was add that one right there. And by doing that, that creates, this is a difference of six, right? So that's optimal. And we don't see that here in this first test fodder because we see, uh, you know, we hit the one as a low value and then we hit the six as the high mark. And it's just sort of a one pass through. There's no sort of uh, pre-existing condition that's sort of reset by that seven dropping down to the one, that decline, if that makes any sense. Um, basically, like the minimum value doesn't drop. So that's not the right way to word it. But anyway, what's going on right here is that, um, you know, obviously we have the optimal solution right there. And if we didn't add this third test in here, we could potentially not properly track the optimal profit in sort of an external variable, and that wouldn't be reflected. We could accidentally not, if that makes sense, I'll type it out. I'll be quiet and just start coding it out. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to track the minimum value as we go through. So once again, on this middle case, if we track the minimum value, then we start out with the seven, and we're going to store that as both the minimum and the maximum value. Maybe we won't store the maximum value. That might not be necessary. But we'll definitely store it as the minimum value because, you know, our buy low value. And then when we get to the one, we'll say, hey, wait, we've got an improvement on that value. So we'll overwrite that seven with the new lowest value that we see. And we'll keep on chugging along. And then we'll use that low value and we'll find the difference against each one of these, as long as it remains the lowest value. And of course, if we were to find another lower value, like say that was a two and we found a one over here, then we would overwrite that one with, or excuse me, overwrite that two with the one and keep on chugging away and finding the difference. And as we go, we want to have a sort of, it's gonna be local to our function variable, but external to our loop that is sort of a max current profit, kind of like the max profit seen so far variable. So if maybe if I start coding it out, it will make a little more sense. I like to try and describe it ahead of time without writing code, but in this situation, I think it would just code out better. So we know we need at least a min, and I'm going to set that equal to infinity, infinity in JavaScript. So any value that is seen is going to, if we test against that, any value seen is obviously going to, that's not infinity itself, is going to test less than infinity. So therefore, no matter what this first value is right there, pretty much any, you know, normal integral value of one, two, in the leak code um, constraints, I believe, which is a good question to ask in a coding interview, obviously, or like, what are the constraints? What's... What's the highest numeric value I can expect or whatever? So I think it was like 10 to the fourth or 10 to the fifth. So, you know, even 10 to the fifth is going to test less than infinity. So therefore, even if that was 10 to the fifth, 100,000, then it would uh, it would automatically save as a minimum value correctly. All right. And then we will also need our max profit. And I'm just going to leave that one uninitialized for now. And this will be min value, I guess, just to make it a little more readable. All right, I'll scroll this down a bit. 
Okay, so obviously we need to loop over it. So I'm going to just do a traditional for loop, which is probably the fastest in JavaScript, slightly less readable than some of the alternatives. And it can also translate to other languages as well for people who would like to compare and convert it to like that. So we'll do the typical old index starting at zero while that index is less than the uh, prices list or array or whatever you want to call it length. Then we'll go ahead and oops, increment I. So when we get in here, we need to test. We'll be on this first seven here and we'll say. I'm going to pause real quick and just tell you this. This list right here was the other example. Go seven, six, four, three, two, one, obviously all descending. So no matter what day you're to purchase that stock on, you would always make zero profit. So. That's what's going on there is if you cannot achieve any profit return zero, just to clarify that. Okay, so back again to this first index value, the seven, we're gonna test it and say, if uh, prices at the index is greater than, or excuse me, less than min value, then we want to set min min value to equal to prices to that current price. And do we want to do anything else there? That should be good. So we'll set that to that current, so that will set the minimum value to seven. And then we wanna say, we wanna test that seven against We want to test the min value against the current spot. So we'll say, because let's say we already had a minimum value before, like down here, we could jump down to this example. So if we were already had one as the minimum value, and now we're on the second pass through the loop, we'd be on the seven. It would test it's not less than one. So minimum value would still be one. And then we'll want to say uh, our profit or yeah, bear, do I want to make a variable profit? Sure, bear profit equals um, price is I, our current value that we happen to be at seven plus, or excuse me, minus that minimum value. So in this case, in this first pass through here, then it will be seven minus seven, which will equal zero. So we'll go ahead and initialize profit to zero right here. And we'll say, if our profit that we just calculated is greater than our maximum profit we've discovered so far, then we'll save, um, We'll save into max profit our our new little calculated profit. All right. That seems like it could work. So let's run through it real quick. Of course, in a coding interview, you're likely to run into a scenario where you can't even test compile your code. So in those style of interviews, you're usually expected to run through your code. So profit takes in max profit takes in prices list. And we're going to set the min value to infinity for obvious reasons. We just discussed it the max profit to zero for each item in prices. We're going to say if that item is less than the current minimum value that we've seen so far, then set it to the minimum value. So the first pass seven will become the minimum value. Um, then we'll say if profit it, profit gets prices. Hmm. I'm sorry. I'm not saying these variables in a good way. So we're going to save to profit the profit. That's what this is. We're going to calculate the profit. That's probably the easiest way to describe that line. We're going to calculate the profit and then we're going to test if that profit we just calculated is the highest profit that we've seen so far. If so, save it into that variable.
override it with the new highest value. And keep chugging along, and then once we're done with that loop, we'll return the uh, max profit. Okay, so I'm going to hit F5, my little setup, and see all the assertions passed. So there it is. Pretty easy one. I actually just solved this before I hit record, and that, I think, was a lot of the reason to do why, why I was stumbling over it is my other solution was roughly, I don't know, 50% larger than this one. I actually had a, a minimum and a maximum and uh, all that sort of a thing. So when I was working this one out, I was like, hey, you know what? I don't even need that. Like I had a maximum for the maximum value tracking through here that I'd seen so far. And then when I uh, had reset my minimum value i also reset the current maximum seen so far to zero and blah 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 but that solution this one's almost overly easy to do there so as you can see that works that that goes through let's try walking through with uh like this example here this bottom example so we come in we have a one and so if one is less than the minimum value, which is currently infinity, the first pass through, then we'll set that overwrite min value with the one. And then we'll calculate our profit. And if one minus the min value, which is also one at this point, which will evaluate to zero, profit will become zero. So if zero is greater than max profit which is also zero then max profit gets profit but it will be equal so nothing will happen the only effective change is that uh we now are storing one in our minimum value so then we'll come back out here to the for loop and that will bring us to seven it will test as seven less than the length yeah it is okay so if seven is less than the min value which it isn't so we'll come down here and it will say we'll calculate the profit which is seven minus one which would be six and it says if six is greater than the max profit seems so far which is currently still zero then go ahead and save the uh, six as the max profit come back through the loop and continue doing so for the rest of the loop so just to go one more beyond just to test this second one and make sure it's cool we'll come through here still less than price's length if one is less than the minimum value seen so far which it isn't it's equal to it so we'll come down here calculate the profit if one minus one which is zero for the profit is greater than the maximum profit which is six which it isn't so we'll just keep going through the loop and it will just keep on doing that and keep on realizing that nothing is going to be greater than that six seen so far so there you have it the max profit for to i can't remember the exact title of this uh code challenge but it's buy low sell high to get the max profit of a stock price and it's that simple thanks a lot for watching